the importance of balancing cholesterol. Now, it's becoming more commonly known that um, not enough cholesterol in your diet can be detrimental to hormone production. But too much cholesterol can lead to clogged arteries and in, an in, increased risk of heart disease and circulation problems. There is some truth to the medical advice that mainstream medicine have been giving out all these years, but it's just been a little misunderstood. Um, we do need some cholesterol in our diet and to observe a diet that's either low or no cholesterol is going to um, have a negative effect on hormone production and testosterone production. But it's important to balance out your cholesterol. Uh, in this video, we're going to consider a few ways that we can help to balance out our cholesterol and to make sure that our body is using it up uh, effectively. Now, the first thing um, to point out is that just consuming more cholesterol does not guarantee that the body will automatically use it to, to create optimized testosterone levels, especially if the body is out of sync in any way. If your body is out of sync in any way, this can and does have a negative effect on hormone production. Now, cholesterol only ever becomes a problem if an excess is allowed to build up within the body. This occurs when the body is not using the cholesterol up in sufficient levels. You do not need to get obsessive over this. A small excess and a permanent level of present cholesterol in your blood is beneficial. Now, however, um, this leads uh, many to believing that increased consumption of saturated fats will lead to higher and te higher testosterone. Um, there's some truth to this, but if the body is out of sync in any way, this is not guaranteed, and too much saturated fat is unhealthy and leads to numerous health problems. But saturated fat is essential, and we need some sat fats in our diet, and of course we need some cholesterol. So how much cholesterol do we need? Um, that's a difficult question because we are all different and we all have different nutritional requ requirements. Um, a bigger guy will probably need more than a smaller guy, um, probably, but not necessarily. Also, higher levels of activity will result in varying nutritional needs. Also, con consider your metabolic rate, uh, your body type. And all these things are going to affect your ideal optimum nutrient intake. Now, mainstream recommended daily intake of cholesterol is 300 milligrams per day. Now, based upon the fact that mainstream suggests low cholesterol intake, this is probably not going to be enough for most people. So I suggest aiming for around 2000 milligrams per day, but this is just a suggestion. I urge you to find your own sweet spot for your own personal requirements. Now, this could be more than 2,000 milligrams for some and less for, than 2,000 milligrams for others. Now, when you're beginning with all of this, um, consider your previous habits. If you've been leading a sedentary lifestyle, consuming a lot of processed foods or takeaway, then chances are you already have high blood cholesterol levels. So it would be detrimental to such a person to start smashing a load of sat fats. So a good bit of advice to anyone is before starting to optimize your cholesterol intake is to get a blood exam to determine your current levels. This will give you an insight into how to conduct your strategy and where to begin. And of course, it will save you a load of time um, as well. Now, a good thing to consider with cholesterol intake is to consume cholesterol from foods which are high in cholesterol, but not so high in saturated fats. I mean, you need some, some saturated fats in your diet, but excessive consumption of saturated fats can lead to higher levels of LDL or bad cholesterol. Think about this long term, because... Um, Long, your long-term health uh, will determine um, how well you maintain your testosterone levels as you get older. 
Now, consuming a modest amount of saturated fats every day isn't a bad thing. I would recommend around 10% of total calorific intake should be saturated fats. Eating avocado will help to balance your cholesterol as this. Uh, they naturally help in the conversion of LDL cholesterol, bad cholesterol, into HDL cholesterol, which is good cholesterol. And this is why it's important to observe um, a well-balanced diet. Foods that are high in cholesterol but low in saturated fat include things like eggs, shellfish, liver and other organ meats. These foods can be a great way of getting enough cholesterol in your diet while at the same time avoiding too much saturated fat. Now if you're someone that has previously consumed a lot of processed foods then I would highly recommend that you start here. Replace your consumption of processed foods with things like eggs, uh, shellfish, organ meats. As a means of general advice, always consume cholesterol-rich food from whole food sources such as meat and dairy products. And also, um, if it doesn't exist in nature and it's been manufactured in any way, then it's best avoided. Now for the balancing out of your cholesterol, now by this I mean that you are encouraging your body to use up most of the cholesterol that you are consuming while also at the same time maintaining healthy cholesterol levels. Consuming enough cholesterol for your hormone production is only one side of this state of balance. Now there is one thing that is absolutely effective for inducing your body to consume any excess cholesterol. Now this might seem illogical and counterproductive to some, but this is stress. Now I don't mean, you know, become a, a stressed person all the time. I'm not saying this, but this is planned stress events, which means stepping out of your comfort zone and being challenged. You know, not prolonged, unhealthy and detrimental stress because stress induces cortisol production and cortisol is made using cholesterol. Um, so um, cort cortisol is actually an effective way of you can utilize your cortisol to help balance out your cholesterol. But of course, high stress can harm hormone production as it can steal the ingredients to make hormones which is the cholesterol. If you're stressed all the time, you're producing cortisol all the time. And of course, this will use up the cholesterol instead of making testosterone with it if you've taken that too, too far. But used in moderation, it can be highly effective in preventing excess cholesterol, helping to maintain a balance and preventing an excess buildup. Now, the best way of... Um, inducing a planned cortisol spike is high intensity physical activity you know this is another reason why um, physical activity is good for testosterone this stresses the body and induces a cortisol spike but remember to consider not too much and not too little again this will be different for everyone drinking coffee also spikes cortisol but moderation again is the best approach here also, drinking green tea helps to lower LDL and reduce total cholesterol levels. Another drink effective in reducing cholesterol is golden milk. This is milk with turmeric added to it, and it's great for lowering total cholesterol levels. You can also add turmeric to dishes as well, and turmeric is very beneficial um, for testosterone in many different ways. Now, another thing is high cocoa chocolate. And when I say high cocoa chocolate, try and get 95 or 100 percent cocoa, because even with um, a lot of people recommend um, 70 percent plus cocoa chocolate, but that has um, sugar in it. The 95 percent has you know, trace amounts of sugar in it. The 100 percent um, has practically no sugar in it. Also, fish high in omega-3 fatty acids, olive oil, pears, apples and other foods that are high in plant sterols will help to manage your cholesterol levels. Again, you know, this is why it's important to eat a healthy, well-balanced diet 
including a bit of everything. You know, the testosterone diet, the optimum testosterone diet consists of a bit of everything. Now, avocado happens to be the food richest in plant, plant sterols. And this is why it's effective at reducing LDL while increasing HDL cholesterol. Other foods which are good, high in plant sterols, include nuts, seeds, sage, oregano, thyme, paprika, various legumes, and of course fruit and vegetables. Now what I do is I consume moderate to high cholesterol. I balance my diet to include meats, fish, fruits, vegetables, legumes and whole grains. And this strategy has worked because my I've had blood tests that have confirmed that my cholesterol levels are not a cause for concern. They're within normal ranges and also my hormone levels are really good. And I frequently add paprika or turmeric to my dishes as well because I know that both of these are effective in managing cholesterol. Now I usually eat meat or fish at every meal but not red meats all the time. I can also consume a lot of chicken um, and I consume a lot of fish as well. I always consume at least four eggs per day and my diet also includes plenty of organ meats. Now when you're including a lot of meat in your diet be aware of iron overload. Now I also eat a, a small piece of pure animal fat each day. Now my evening meal is usually high cholesterol and this is because hormone secretion takes place overnight during sleep and I ensure my blood will have sufficient levels to make this take place as efficiently as possible. Now my evening meal tends to consist of meat instead of fish. Now an obvious trick for balancing cholesterol is the optimization of your tea levels and doing all that you can for obtaining the balance of all of your hormones because this is going to help your body um, to become more efficient at utilizing the cholesterol. All of your body's hormones are made from cholesterol, bearing in mind when you're balancing hormones, this is your endocrine system, and this consists of seven different glands, each of which are producing their own hormones. All of these use cholesterol effectively. Now, another thing to consider is that at, at around 2 to 3 a.m. your cortisol levels tend to rise as well. Um, I've made a video on this channel about cortisol, but cortisol levels is not something that you need to eliminate. And it's not bad because um, cortisol is involved in, to a certain degree, in how much energy you have. But this also contributes towards using cholesterol. Now, when I wake up, the first thing I do in the morning is to consume a coffee. This further spikes cortisol. Now, about an hour after breakfast, I, I usually train. This consists of two to three hours of resistance training, followed by 30 minutes of bag work. Um, some people used to say to me, you train for too long. But this all high stress activity to stimulate more cholesterol use. Um, sometimes I go mountain biking in the afternoon, but this is only very frequently. Usually from about midday onwards, I begin my wind down towards the evening. My regular routine takes into account the need for my body to utilise cholesterol effectively to keep my body in sync. The aim is to reduce cortisol towards the end of the day to promote better sleep. I meditate and relax at the end of the day. My last meal of the day also includes moderate carb intake as this also helps to reduce cortisol. So towards the evening, you want to be, you know, ideally your last meal of the day is moderate to high cholesterol, but also you want to be um, later on in the day towards the evening, lowering your cortisol, increasing your cholesterol ready for overnight when you're going to be secreting testosterone. Now all of these things, little things combined together will help you to balance your cholesterol and this all helps to optimize your hormonal output. Optimized um, cholesterol levels will significantly benefit your testosterone levels. Remember to balance everything out. Treat your body as an entire organism and this will give you far better results. Subscribe to this channel and follow this series for more.